talk is called Control It. It's a device that I decided to build um, because of... Oh, it's okay. Okay. No problem. It's a device that I decided to build because I thought it would be fun and because of some motivations that I'll talk about in a few minutes or in a few seconds. And it's pretty much a brain BCI device or a brain computer interface device that utilizes um, SSVP, which I'll talk about in a, in a minute too, uh, to move a player in a game. So here it is. I was just thinking, okay, so we have, uh, this is the, sorry, this is actually how the device looks. Um, but if you wanna see like uh, the circuit and all that good stuff, I can show you pictures and show you video uh, later on. But pretty much, I wanted to explore a different way to use uh, the controller. So first of all, we have a lot of physical controllers, such as uh, the joysticks or the, you know, the controllers you use to play the game, your computer, and now VR. Uh, but I wanted to explore using the brain as a controller and see what uh, we can do with that. So, uh, well, by using an EEG. But um, before I get into that, I want to talk to you about a few motivations. So one of the reasons why I thought about this is because um, there are a lot of people, and we, uh, we all like games, we all like gaming because it's fun, but what happens to the people who do not have the ability to move like their limbs, such as people with um, AL ALS or who have had a stroke who are now paralyzed from like the neck down? How are they going to be able to engage in this gaming culture? And the, although their limbs and all that good stuff may not be working, the one thing that is working is their brain. So how do we... Um, use their brain to make it seem like they haven't um, lost any ability to do anything. And so what I did was I uh, uh, used EEG, um, brain signals, to do, you know, to explore this uh, problem. So the solution for me was to build a low-cost uh, EEG headband, um, again, that utilizes EE, um, SSV, SSVEP. Now, SSVEP is Steady State Evoked Potentials, and what that means is, it's, if you look here in the occipital lobe, that's where uh, most of your visual, um, visual things get processed. And so when you're staring at something, you're, um, it gets processed in your occipital lobe. So for example, what I um, decided to use was frequencies. So usually we cannot see above like 24 hertz. So let's say like 60 hertz, like these lights are blinking at 60 hertz right now. We can't see the blinking, but our brain can. So if something's blinking at like, or flashing at like 70 hertz, our brains can see it, our eyes can't. So I decided to use those um, uh, frequencies in order to move the player. So, and also the reason why I use SSVP is because it's the easiest way to um, utilize those signals to do something because you don't rely on qualifiers and qualifiers uh, or classifiers are pretty much, um, things that you use, because everybody has, everybody's brain signals are different, so you would have to, um, you know, migrate your, um, your qualifier to that. But since SSVP just looks at a frequency, it's looking at the amplitude of the frequency. And so if someone has, someone, the amplitude of someone's uh, frequency is low, it's still okay, because you can still differentiate it from the rest of the uh, spectrum. So now we're going to get into hardware. And it's, this type of system is very, very easy to build. And so here are some of the components that I use, like the Arduino, of course, wires, an 8620, which is just a differential amplifier, the TLO7, which is an op-amp uh, op -amp IC, of course, resistors, capacitors, and two dry electrodes. And actually, I'm going to show you a design that, where I use three uh, dry electrodes, but I ended up only using two of them because uh, of course, three wasn't necessary. And um, yeah. So here is the full build, but I'm gonna go into different, uh, talk about the different components of this circuit. So first, I'm gonna talk about the 8620 and the acquisition of the signal. 
So first you have to acquire the signal, but the signal is extremely low, it's in millivolts, um, so we need something that's going to amplify that uh, using the ground from the ear and then the signal from the back of the head. And so uh, I just amp uh, g gave it a gain of 10. Uh, so I didn't want to gain have a gain that was too high because you don't want to uh, amplify a lot of noise that's gonna be going on. So yeah, so again, this signal is used, can be used for any biological sim signal such as EEG or ECG. Then uh, I got into my gain and my filter, and when I went ahead and did was use a salient key um, topology, because with the salient key, you can do band, uh, you can do a filter, and in that filter, you can do gain. And so, I use a band pass filter centered at 20 hertz, uh, because I wanted to use um, 10 hertz, and I wanted to use 30 hertz for my uh, different frequencies that the person was gonna look at. And so then at the end of that, I used the A to D converter, which is just a comparator. And I, decide, I, I did this in hardware, but then later on I decided to just use the one in the Arduino because it's not really necessary to be using an external um, A to D converter. And so I see, I scratched that. And this, these two are the signals that were going into the uh, Arduino the outputs of the filters. And so of course I used the microcontroller and I utilized A A0 and A1 uh, of the microcontroller. And so here is the software flow. So basically, it's just what I described earlier. I'm acquiring a signal, doing some A to D conversion using the Arduino, obviously it already has one. And then it needs to perform an FFT in order to figure out what the frequency um, that the person is actually looking at or that you're getting the signal for then it determines the signal, or it determines the frequency, and then based on that frequency, it determines an action. So I use the Arduino IDE to um, first acquire the signal, and then to do all the processing, to make it a lot easier, I went ahead, I don't know, I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard of this, but processing, where you can do, where it has a library, built-in library for FFT, and then also you can program it to do, to write games. So then uh, I did all of that uh, using processing. So now here for the integration. So the EEG or the electrode that I used was this one. And it's pretty much just metal. And just, but it has these little um, spider legs so that it can penetrate inside of hair. And then um, you just put it around this area of the brain. So occipital lobe as said before. And then this is just the signal conditioning circuit. So just, you know, you put your electrode and then you have like a, a, a wire coming down and it attaches to the, to the um, circuit. And then you put the output of the circuit into the Arduino and then, you know, software does everything else. And so you can see here where I was uh, trying it with different signals here and you can see the frequency. Now this is actually a perfect, like it was a perfect uh, implementation, and that's because I use a function generator to do this. Because, <laughs> because um, if you just do it straight from you know your signals, it's uh, it's actually a little harder, and you need to figure out a way to cancel out a lot of the noise that happens. So um, this is just what you can see in free, in uh, processing, and then this is okay. So about the game. So in the game, what happens is you can go uh, forward, and then you can go over. And so one frequency, which was a 10 hertz, goes this way, and then the 30 hertz goes up. And so, yeah, so this is the device, and this is um, myself and a friend of mine wearing it to show, the, uh, show how it looks, the aesthetics. And then these are just future applications for this type of device, because you can use it, uh, it's, it becomes a controller, and you can use it for controlling a, a wheelchair, a drone, which I will be trying to do soon because I just got my drone. And <laughs> you can use it to do pretty much anything you would like. And right now what the game looks like is it has like the, the picture of the game and then it has two, um, I have video of this as well and I can show you later, but it has two different um, screens that are flashing at different um, rates. And then what, depending on the one that you're staring at, that's what happens or, or the player will move. So what I want to do in the future is actually integrate the frequencies uh, inside of the actual game to where the sky will be flashing at one um, frequency while the bottom, the floor is flashing at another. So the, the floor will signal you walking forward, 
the uh, sky will signal you jumping. And I want to have these go at frequencies above 60, where I know for sure that you cannot see them, but it's a little iffy because whenever you have two frequencies together, you can usually tell the difference. So like, we can't see 24 hertz, but if you compare 24 to like 60 or something, or something above 24, you can see the difference. So that is the end of my talk, and thank you very much.